Hi everyone, it's Gods and Charmants here and welcome to Thursday's Wisdom from the Cauldron. Today we're going to be talking about candle magic. Um, different types of candles, different types of candle magic, when you might want to use candle magic, how to incorporate it into your practice. So let's get started. Firstly, what is candle magic? Well, the name kind of suggests it all. Candle magic is when you work ritual or spellcraft using candles. Now, this may be exclusively with a candle. You may literally sit down, have your spell candle in your chosen colour, and that's your only tool. And you go ahead and do your spell. Or you may actually be incorporating candle magic with other tools such as oils and crystals um, and gridding, charm making, any of those things. Often you'll find that there's a candle in pretty much most rituals. Um, and there's several different ways to use candles to achieve magical goals. So the first is in spellcraft for what I call more immediate intentions. So for example, if you need money to help pay a specific bill that's coming up, or if you need um, help with a specific interview that you're going to the following week, um, maybe you need to work some protection magic that is coming into effect right now. Maybe you want healing for yourself or a family member or need to send healing, then that would be more immediate intentions. Now for those kind of candle magic workings, you would generally use candles that could burn down completely in a short time after you have completed your actual ritual work in a circle. Now this is because then you during the ritual you're putting all your focus, all your intention, you're raising all your energy and directing it into the candle because you're wanting something to work quickly, you're needing a quicker turnaround, you're needing to send healing right now. So the last thing you want to do is have a large candle and blow or snuff out that candle and have all the magic still contained within the candle itself and not gone out into the universe yet. So for those occasions, depending on what your time frame is and generally if you're going to be leaving your house or not, a standard spell size candle or chime candle, you may hear them called, is 10 centimetres tall. Now these burn down depending on the type of wax you're using anywhere between an hour and two hours. In the store, I actually offer a five centimetre beeswax spell candle. Um, because often you don't have that long to wait. So these burn down very quickly, often within around half an hour. So then you know the candle burns down, the candle puts itself out, your intention has been released fully. Now if you are in the house for longer and you have done your ritual at your altar and you can leave something burning because you're going to be in, then you could absolutely, absolutely, that is not a word, absolutely use a tea light which depending again on the wax will burn down between four to six hours some by longer burning waxes could be eight but generally it's four to six for the average size tea light now the other way to use candles for your magic is for long standing intentions now a good example of this would be if you have a permanent prosperity and abundance altar in your home which is something i really do recommend and stand by if people ask me you know i've got my general altar that i celebrate the sabbaths on and do a lot of my ritual work on would you recommend any other type of altar i would absolutely go to a prosperity and abundance altar because this is energy you want constantly flowing into your home, constantly in flow through your family, so that you're always bringing in that type of energy and not having to constantly do spells one after the other after the other, trying to bring in extra funds. You want to just have a general abundant life and your prosperity and abundance altar can also be an abundance of happiness, an abundance of health. So anything that is in line with abundance, 
Now in these cases, you're not working a one-off spell or ritual. You are constantly going back and feeding your altar space. This is a permanent space, a permanent area. It doesn't have to be big. It can literally just be your candle and maybe a tumble stone of some natural citrine, a piece of aventurine, a piece of green emerald, a piece of jade sitting next to it. Now in these cases, you want a long burning candle. Now, before I forget, if you are not sure what I mean by feeding your altar, if you click on the link down below for the website and go to the Book of Shadows section, there's a free information sheet there on how to feed your altar, what it means and what the process of that is. So for this type of working, maybe you have a long term health altar in your home. Maybe you have a long term relationship altar in your home. People have altars for different things. If they're going through a tough time in their relationship or marriage, then you may want to set up a permanent space dedicated to that. If happiness is a problem in your home, you may want to set up a space. These don't even have to look like altars, which is where candle magic can be really handy because we're not using 10 tools. We're not laying out necessarily a huge altar cloth. This candle here is one of my Prosperity and Abundance candles. It comes with your charge on the front, but you could turn it around and have it actually on a shelf that way. And no one that was, you know, anyone visiting your home would have no idea that it was anything special other than a nice candle. And they come with a beautiful wooden lid. So it looks like a candle you could have purchased anywhere. So these burn for over 30 hours, closer to 40 then you've got tin candles and votive candles, which you can put in votive holders. These are all longer term burning candles. Pillar candles is another option that you can use. Something that's going to be there for at least a month that you're not going to have to keep replenishing. Now, the next way that you'll hear about candles used in candle magic is generally talked about most within the pagan path, the Wiccan path and witchcraft. So that would be a working candle. Now, some people would refer to the type of candle I was just saying, for example, the prosperity candle as a working candle because it is, it's a candle that's constant. Um, but some wouldn't, which is why I've separated them. Now, generally a working candle is a candle on your altar that you have dedicated. A lot of people have maybe a white jar candle that has specific essential oils or specific crystals in it that is dedicated to um, keeping energy clear and raising the vibration of the space. Then every single ritual they do, every single working at that altar, that candle is lit and it's almost like it is part of the circle casting itself. It's part of the container you have built for every time you do a magical working. And every time you do, it's giving out its properties, but it's also absorbing the energy you're raising and keeping everything at a beautiful high frequency. Some people have working candles for the god and goddess or god or goddess, depending on who you work with and what kind of altar you have. So again, they would have two jar candles or two pillar candles, whatever type of candle you've chosen that's longer burning, that every time they do a working, they light these candles in honour of those deities and they get lit time and time again. So that's kind of the three main sections when it comes to candle magic. Now, there's no real rules when it comes to candle magic itself. Um, obviously, you can use a white candle in place of any other colour. You don't have to have all the colours unless you want to. But, as always, when we're doing our magical workings, we're trying to layer. We're trying to layer energy and vibration and raise vibration. So to do that, we can incorporate extra things to our candle magic. So, for example, colour. By choosing a colour candle that is in sync with what it is you're trying to manifest, you're adding another layer to your ritual working. Now, something to mention here, yes, you can go online and be, what does this color, you know, go with? What are the correspondences for colors magically? And you can absolutely do that as a starting point. But what I would say is if a certain color 
does not resonate with you for a certain purpose, regardless of how many people online say that is the colour, don't use it. Use one that does resonate with you because that's their magic. This is your magic. If you want to do a money spell and everyone's saying to you, use green, but for some reason you associate green with something completely different. It's never been associated with money for you, but I don't know, blue has, then you would be better off using blue because that for you would be a powerful color. So don't get too stuck on it. While all the colors do have natural correspondences that they vibrate in frequency with, if you don't feel that's the right color and your intuition is saying, okay, don't use purple for that, use green, don't use yellow for that, use blue, then absolutely trust your intuition over correspondence charts. Now, with your ritual, you've incorporated colour. Other things you can do with jar candles, for example, with this jar candle, my prosperity one, we're incorporating green. We're incorporating gemstone energy with some chipstones in the candle, the same in the tin, the same in the votive. We're also incorporating essential oils because they are in the candles. Now, not fragrance oils, because remember, fragrance oils are chemical, so they have a low vibration. And all magical work, we want to be of high vibration and keep as natural and as close to the energies of the earth and the universe that we're working with. But essential oils in our candles, another layer of correspondence, another layer of vibration. So you can amp up your candle magic as much as you want. Now, a trend that I've seen a lot lately online, which scares me a bit, so I am going to put a little warning in here, are candles completely encrusted with herbs over the top. Now, I really would caution you against buying candles encrusted with herbs, whatever type of candle it is, a votive, a jar, completely encrusted um, beeswax candles, chime candles, whatever it may be because they can set light. Your wick, the flame will spread out. It will burn quite hot and it's very easy for them to catch a light. You can go online and ironically find many, many stories of people that have lost altars, had their walls destroyed, lost rooms. There are several people whose house has burnt down due to herbs on candles. It is not a safe practice. If you want to incorporate herbs, I recommend powdering them like I do, and then you just want a pinch of the herb. You don't want to have dried herbs all over the top of your candle. You don't want to have papers all over the top of your candle. It's not safe to burn. It can go up quicker than you can react to it. The same with oils. Now the next thing, if your candles don't have essential oil blends in them and you have a beautiful beeswax spell candle, you may want to anoint this with a magical oil made with essential oils. Now you don't want to take your bottle of oil and pour over your candle because oil will heat up and then become extremely flammable in large quantities and your candle can burn down really quickly and then literally set a light. So it's all common sense really, but sometimes I think it's things we don't think about, especially when we see people doing it on YouTube um, or people who are teachers recommending that we put you know, pure essential oils on candles. You always want to dilute them, not put them pure on the candle because again, they have a flammability risk. So to anoint your candle, you take a little bit of your oil on your forefinger and then you anoint your candle. Now, I like to anoint my candles if I'm drawing something towards me. I like to anoint from the top to the middle and the bottom to the middle. If I'm releasing something, then I like to go from the middle to the top and the middle to the bottom. Now, obviously, that is just part of my practice. You may not resonate with that. You may like to put a drop, literally one drop of oil in your hand rub it and then rub your candle between your hands and again you're thinking about your intention whichever method you use for anointing your candle if you're going to anoint the top of these types of candles again you're literally talking a tiny drop 
on your fingers and then put around the edge of the glass or the edge of the wax. You don't want to be pouring bottles of oils onto your candles for your candle magic, okay? Because it is not safe. It's not a good thing to do. So now we've incorporated oils. Like I say, some candles, if you're making your own maybe, or if you're buying from me or another seller, maybe they've incorporated gemstones. I also put um, homemade gem essences and flower essences into my candles as well. So there's many different layers. Some of mine have biodegradable glitter and my glitters are charged under the moon phases, some by singing bowl, all depending on what I need them for. So you can really, if you like, amp up your candle. You can go very simple and you've literally got your chime candle. Very effective. But if you want to amp it up, you absolutely can amp it up. Then there are candles that are working candles for the moon phases. Now for that, this, this for example is my full moon pillar candle. This is a large candle. And if you are working for a very specific small intention, you may still use a small candle on that full moon to set your intention if you need something manifested very, very quickly. But with every full moon, charge this candle under that full moon and light it every full moon. You can use the charge I've provided or use your own charge, set your own intention on the full moon. I have a new moon one as well. And this is gathering up all that energy. It's adding potency, it's adding vibration every moon throughout the year. So you're creating a powerhouse working candle for the full moon or the new moon energy on top of your other workings. So that's another way to use your candle magic. Now, as you can see, there's many different options that you have choices with when it comes to candle magic, and that even extends to putting your candle out. Now, there are two schools of thought on this when we're talking about um, longer term intentions and working candles. The spell candles you don't need to worry about because you're letting them burn down and put themselves out. Now, if you have a candle you're going to put out, there are some people who are from the school of thought that if you blow out the candle, you are blowing away that intention and, if you like, flattening it. So then the power is not there any longer. So they prefer to snuff and say that snuffing out your candle helps keep that energy, that intention, all of the vibrations and everything you've raised in. Now, the other school of thought on this is that when you blow out your candle every single time, you're adding your breath, which is an offering from you to source, and that you are blowing that wish, that intention, that vibration and energy you've put in up to source every single time that you blow it out with extra potency from your own breath. So that's completely, again, a personal choice. There's no right or wrong way. Um, but I wanted to give you both so you could think about it, maybe journal about it, what rings right with you. Um, when I first started practicing years ago, I used to always snuff out my candles because back then that was the way to do it. And no one was really encouraging anyone to forge their own way. It's like... This is, this is how it's taught, this is how you should do it. And then over time, I started experimenting with blowing them out, with snuffing them out and seeing what resonated. And now I blow them out because I feel that I'm putting more of my energy and more of my vibration into it as I blow the candle out. So that's my thoughts on it. I also like to watch the smoke go up um, until it's completely gone at the end of whatever work it is that I am doing. And then lastly, when it comes to candle magic, is to think about what type of wax you're going to use. Now, as with everything, and we've touched on it here, I've touched on it in other videos, it is important for me and my practice, maybe for you, everyone's going to have a different thought on this, to think of the environment and my effect on the environment um, 
and to try and keep things as high vibration as possible when it comes to my tools. So I'm very fussy about my wax. Um, we're probably going to go over the 20 minutes. I usually try and keep these two, but I do think this is important. Now, when I first started Goddess Enchantments, I actually offered candles I made, were, which were Sawyer Votives at the time and Beeswax Spell Candles. That was all I um, made. And then I also offered some paraffin options of the chime candles as well as dinner candles. And over the first year that I was open, people just kept saying to me, can you do a wider Sawyer range? Can you do a wider beeswax range? We don't want the paraffin. We don't like burning it. Everyone was becoming more eco-friendly. And this was 11 years ago. So after that first year, I cut out paraffin and never sold it again afterwards. We didn't use it in my house, but I wanted to offer it as an option. And I soon realized that a lot of people just weren't interested. But the thing with paraffin wax is it's distilled from petroleum, which obviously chemicals. There has been a latest study linking that um, exposure to burning candles very regularly um, has some carcinogenic effects and gives us some carcinogenic emissions uh, leading to possible cancers. Now, I feel we don't have enough information on that yet, but I'm just putting it out there. Our NHS health system advises that if burning paraffin wax candles to always have a window open while we wait for more confirmation. Um, but we do have proof that there are 11 known toxic chemicals that come off of paraffin wax when burned that do affect global warming and our ozone layer and everything. So we do have proof of that. So I feel that they are not particularly environmentally friendly and they have the most soot of all the waxes available. And because it's paraffin from petro petroleum, it is not a renewable source. So I don't stock that and I don't use that. And because it's a chemical, it has a low vibration or no vibration, depending on your viewpoint on that. So it's not really adding anything to your spellcraft, but it could be taking away from it if its vibration's low and you have to work extra to bring it up. The next option is, um, oh, it's gone right out of my mind. It will come back. Hang on. I'm going to move on. That one will come to, back to me. So we have, oh, palm. It was palm. Yeah, the heat here in the UK we're in the middle of a heat wave it is not ending it is unpleasant I'm not enjoying it um, nothing's enjoying it I have a ton of candles to make which I'm putting off till it's a little bit cooler so no I'm I'm frazzled so you'll have to accept my apologies for my frazzledness but palm now palm wax a lot of people are very much against because obviously it is not environmentally friendly. It is very damaging for wildlife, especially orangutans. Um, it is not a good product. However, then we came out with sustainable palm oil and the jury is still very much out on if there really is such a thing as sustainable palm oil. So this is something you will need to do more research into um, and see which side you fall upon when it comes to if it's sustainable, is it sustainable and how you feel about using that. Um, it is a safer burn, but again, there's some real ethical issues there, which do we want to bring in on our magic. Next, soya. Now, this used to be a bigger problem than it is now. Now, soya is one of the, that and beeswax are the most popular candles um, purchased and they are becoming more and more popular and people are asking for them, not just in metaphysical circles, but in um, health food stores. They're going into the major stores now. You can go down to John Lewis and Wilkinson's and Boots and they are all stocking soya candles. But the problem is and has been is that the cheapest version of soya is GMO. Most of the wax on the market is GMO, which 
how you feel about that is really your own decision um, but somewhere else to research now I personally do not use GMO soya wax it's not something I would ever burn in my house so my own soya wax and the soya wax that's used in all of these products for the shop is organic GMO free and guaranteed um, pesticide and everything free they actually send me over the results of their testing each batch is tested for pesticides and um, they can prove it's not GMO I'm it, that's why it is more expensive I'm not gonna lie it makes them a little bit more expensive but in my viewpoint 100% worth it so soya candles a really good option if you are vegan has a very long and even burn time um, so very good for long term goals your altars that you're going to be feeding things like that last but not least beeswax obviously this is not going to be for the vegans among us um, which is why the soya is there as a separate option but beeswax is a beautiful wax it is clean burning it smells lovely in its natural form without having anything added um, mine is sourced ethically it is not from beekeepers who kill off their queens and do all this other horrific stuff no 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 um which is why as well my colors are natural and they're processed slightly differently so you may buy a pink candle from me in january then i've restocked by july and the pink is a slightly different shade they are not going to be uniform like a paraffin wax candle because um of the dyes and things so beeswax high vibration fabulous to use clean burning brilliant for oils the same as the soy so I would really recommend any of the natural waxes um, for your magical candles and I don't really have to recommend it because all my customers that's all they want um, but I know there's some people who don't realize the things about all these waxes I mean when I was discussing this with my husband in the store when we were doing some shopping and the lady behind me tapped me on the shoulder and said excuse me so is paraffin really distilled from petroleum and I was like yeah and she was like I had no idea I'm not gonna buy those again and I was like oh and I just thought common knowledge which is why I just wanted to put that in this video even though it took me over my 20 minutes that I try and keep the wisdom from the cauldron from so that is it from me I'm going to stop talking because my neighbor is mowing the lawn and they're getting closer and closer so that's probably in the background of this video I hope you've enjoyed this week's talk I do have another video coming up as well which has actually been requested to see some of my favorite crystals that I own so I look forward to doing that one for you if you've not already please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you have any suggestions for videos you would like me to do please leave a comment down below do come over to the closed Facebook group where we have some great chats you can ask questions post altar pictures and everything's nice and private and you can pop along to the website our llamas kits are on their way and they are pretty special this year, so I'm really looking forward to that unveiling. That's it from me. Blessed be.